Hey everybody, this is Brandon with Love to Hate, Kiefer for Perez, and Cigars in Cinema. Got a question to ask you. Are you a fan of horror movies? Do you like to be scared? Is Halloween your thing? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, there's something you got to do. Texas Frightmare Weekend is coming May 5th, 6th, and 7th in DFW. Tickets are available at TexasFrightmareWeekend.com. Go check it out. The list of people that they have coming to this event gets more impressive every year. There's great photo ops, a lot of great vendors. Be there. It's going to be a killer event. Love to Hate. The podcast that asks the question, what do you love to hate? You are a smelly pirate hooker. And I hate your ass face. Do you love it? No. Do you hate it? Oh, yeah. Yes. You stupid, ignorant, son of a bitch, dumb bastard. I chart in your gender direction. No, no, no. No more foreplay. Hey, kids, it's Monday. I'm Dan Rydell, alongside Casey McCall. Hey! Welcome to another edition of Sports Night. No, I'm kidding. I've always wanted to say that. It's my dream job. Yeah. No, this this is my dream job, doing love to hate with my buddy, Brandon. Brandon. There you go. That's me. That's him. I'm Philip Fullman. What are we going to talk about today, Brandon? <laughs> Drinking on mic. No. <laughs> it's one of the worst things. Do you like that little slurpy slurp? <laughs> yeah. That, that tends to, that's one of the things they told us in radio never to do. Never there were did. all these yeah. rules that we had to go no by. No eating, no drinking. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, never talk about TV. Right. Really? That's one of them? Oh, yeah. Back when I was doing it. Because think about it. I mean, you had TV at home uh-huh. and movies, and then you had radio. So if you're telling somebody, hey, go home tonight and watch this show, they're like, hey, 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 they're at home turning off the station. Right, yeah. And so you were never to talk about it. But now if you listen to morning radio, they're like, oh, my no, God, did you, watch, did you watch yeah, Game of Thrones? Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of gone. But it doesn't matter now because all the radio stations are owned by all the TV stations. Exactly. Are owned by, I forget. Uh, it's all very ancestral now. Yeah. Oh, who was it? ESPN just had on. It was the most bizarre thing uh, until you realize his new movie was was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They had the the stars on there talking sports and stuff. And yeah, they, and I forget I forget specifically who it was, but but when you look at it, it's like okay, his movie is coming. It's the out Rock and Kevin Disney. Hart or something. Yeah, or something. Yeah. And it's like okay, so it's a Disney film, right? So of course they're going to advertise it because they get cross promotion. Yeah. So so anyway. today what I wanted to talk about was um, well originally we decided we we're going to talk about. Um, what the hell? A ha- a New Year's resolutions. But then right. We, we kind of filtered it down to the one New Year's resolution that no one ever keeps. It's the hardest one to keep, and it's the one no one should ever make, dieting. That's the hardest one to keep? I think so. Don't you think? Yeah, and they say, you know, people people make them every year. It's it's always everybody wants to lose weight. Con- Save you know. money. Something like that. Well, and, 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 and health is, is a big concern, how your clothes fit. Um. You know, I think you just feel better. As somebody who who used to be, I'm not a small guy now, but uh, you know, I've had some health issues, and, and part mm-hmm. of that involved weight gain. When I was up to 300 pounds, I did not feel good. You got up to 300 pounds? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, really. And wow. as soon as I started getting my health issues corrected, the weight just fell, and I started feeling better. And so now I'm not even I'm not where I want to be, but I feel so much better. And you're just you don't feel like a schmuck walking around like, eh, you know, hey, great, I can just buy that and pick it up. So, right, right. Uh, there's part of that, the ego or, or just the self-confidence that goes along with the health part. But I think that's really the main thing is not making yourself sick or just keeping your mach- the machine in shape if you look at the body truly as a machine. Right, right. And you said you're on a diet now, right? Well, I'm, I'm going to call it a, a lifestyle change. Let's not call it a diet. I think diet's a horrible word. When you, when you have a diet, it's something that you're not going to stay on forever. It's something that you're going to do temporarily to lose the weight, and then you go back to eating like a schmuck. But I think at my age, at my advanced age of 46 years old, I think you have to have a lifestyle change. Because if you go on a diet, you're just going to gain the weight back when you stop doing it. You know what Richard so, Simmons called it? A live it. A live it? Because it's a lifestyle, and it doesn't have the word die in it. But that's Richard Simmons. Yeah. So he got to live it. Yeah. Yeah. Is he swear dead to, yet? No. <laughs> he's swear around, to God, right? as a kid, I never knew he was gay. Yeah. No, you just thought he was really enthusiastic. I like, did. And then Larry was like, oh, he's, he's <laughs> He gay. likes the dick. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense now. Yeah. 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 That's, right, he, that's as okay. As opposed to sluts. He doesn't like sluts. Yeah. No. He should he like doesn't. sluts. He could have okay. had all the sluts he wanted. That's our, that's our were... executive producer, Steve. <laughs> yeah. He's over getting there. Getting the phone over there. Taking phones for. We are taking phone calls. Uh, the phone to call in is. Uh, <laughs> no. Just, <laughs> Five by five. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to be able to do live call-ins, five, five, but five. we're not T-A-L-K. so. 
That's right, 555-TALK. Right now, we're giving away a set of tickets to go see Foreigner live at the Special Event Center. Call what? Now, Foreigner? Number... Yeah, I don't know. Are they still touring? <laughs> Who's opening for those guys? Lover Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lover Boy. <laughs> Who also, didn't Mike Reno get really fat at one point? He yes. had some health issues. And, yes. You know, that's the thing. It, it catches up to all of us. Yeah. Um, you know, you see, you see the, the workout guys on TV, and then, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you think back to high school, and you're like, I used to be that guy. Right. And the joke I always make is, then I figured out beer tasted better than Gatorade. Yeah. Um, but it's just, you know, with the exception of very few of us, we just, as we get older, we get bigger. Yeah. And I think part of it is... We just become lazier. We quit moving as much. We don't. We're not as active. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that happens. And look at you and I. We have very sedentary jobs for oh, the yeah. most oh, part. Yeah. To go back to Mike Reno for a second, though. Yeah, uh, I did see Loverboy live at yeah. one of the. Uh, what was the station that um, the guy was on that got fired for beating up his girlfriend, and now he's back on radio? Oh, one oh five three. Yeah. Well, he was on some station, and they had a big event, and Loverboy was there, and I took pictures at the event and everything, and Mike Reno. Was still wearing the red leather pants and like a wife beater with the little thing on his hair, like the little bandana. He was at least 350. He was huge. 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 And um, he was red the whole time he was singing. He looked like a giant tomato that was about to explode. It was horrible. It was horrible. Why would you? Still sounded good though. Why would you at 350 pounds even go out just in anywhere in public with just a wife beater? Yeah, and leather pants. Yeah. Because when I was 300 pounds, I walked around the house fully covered because I didn't want to see myself. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I can see that. So, I've never gotten to 300. That was my, yeah, I always told myself, if I ever got to 300, just shoot me in the face. And I'm yeah. Done. I, got I, was, to I, was, I was to that point where it's like, yeah. yeah 285 you know. was the biggest I got. And now I'm down to 259, 260. And I want to get down yeah. to 185, 190. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, for your height. See, yeah. now they tell me, you know, the federal government, we know how much I, I trust them. Um, for my height, I should be 190. Uh-huh. And the last time I got down to 190, people asked me, you know, are, are you... Are you dying? Are right. You, is everything okay? Like, how, yeah. How was your trip to Auschwitz? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly it's, yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Come on. Um, all right. Come on. It was, but it's I mean, been it was, long enough. Never Has long it, enough. No, never long never enough for long Auschwitz enough. jokes? No. Oh, okay. No, never well, forget. Jewish, a, for not yeah. just people, it's been long enough. Um, but yeah, I, I looked totally sick. Yeah. And I thought, well, no, I'm, I'm supposed to be, but so I might, probably about 205, 210, I'm good. Yeah. So I got a ways to go. My ideal weight's 165, but at 165, I was 155 in high school, and I looked anorexic. I looked like a stick. Because how tall are you? 5'9", five 5'10". Five okay. I was 5'10", I'm shrinking. I'm 5'9 yeah. now. But, you know, that happens as you get older. That's true. I think so, I'm still 6'2". So. Yeah. So for but me, lots it's... Lots of calcium, kids. I, I, 185 is really where I looked the best. I was in yeah. shape. You know, I, I felt good at 185. So if I can get to 185, 190, if I can just break 200, I'll be happy, and I'll, I'll look a lot better. I'll feel a lot better. And I, I know diets, I mean, the thing that kills me about the whole diet craze is that they always, there's always something else. And all these diets that come out completely contradict each other. you got one that's like, oh, you know, no carbs and this, and you'll lose the weight and you'll be healthy. And one's like, oh, no, if you do that, your liver is going to give out and you're going to die, so do this instead. And it's, it's like they're constantly coming up with these different things. And really what it boils down to is don't be sedentary. You know, if, if, you, yes. if you are living the life that you're supposed to live, the life that you're supposed to have given the body that you have – you should be moving around all the time, and we we strive to not do that now in our culture. Right now, and it's 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 a different mindset. Um, my dad uh, grew up during the depression, and you know worked since he was he was a young kid. But if you looked at him right after he was out of the navy, first married, you know, here's a picture of them out at the beach or wherever. Mm-hmm. And and I remember as a kid going, what what kind of workout did you do? Mm-hmm. You know, because here he's like super lean cut and like, God, my dad was like a bodybuilder or something. Right, right. Like, what'd you do? He goes, what do you mean? I worked. I had a job. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But what did you He goes, no, 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 no. See, I lifted things for my job. That was what I did. Right, I moved. Right. And then he, he, my mom was telling a story about, you know, he would come home for, for lunch and he would eat a small chicken because they, had, you know, they raised chickens in the backyard. He would eat a small chicken. Uh, an entire bowl of corn, a mm-hmm. bowl of green beans, mashed potatoes, a small loaf of bread, and water, mm-hmm. and go back to work. I'm like, that's that's a huge meal. But it's like, yeah, but when he came back, he was starved because he burned all, all of, of it. it. Yeah. It was fuel. Exactly. It wasn't, 
hey, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this. And it's like, no, no, no. I need this to keep my body moving. Exactly. And he maintained that mentality uh, up until the time he died. He always wanted to be moving. It wasn't, oh, God damn it, I got to go do yard work. It was like, ah, right, get out right, in the right. sun, stretch the muscles. I think a lot of it has to do with the environment that we live in today. And you look at even in the 70s, my parents were, you know, hippie kids, you know, growing up, raising a kid. They didn't stay home and watch television. You know, when they got off work, they went and played you know, tennis or they went and hung out with friends and, you know, let's go do some Frisbee or something. Let's go to the beach, you know, in, in Corpus Christi or, you know, so they, they did stuff, you know, and then they, they'd go home and maybe they'd watch one television show and then they'd go to bed and that was it. At a but, decent hour. Yeah, at a decent hour. Yeah. And and all the meals that they that we ate growing up, you know, I didn't know it was poor growing up, but apparently I was up until high school, basically, yeah. was stuff that my mom made. It was all food that was made at home, prepared there. If we went to Burger King or McDonald's, it was like, ooh, this is fancy. This is like a big right. deal for us. You know, we didn't go out that often. And, you, and I think you didn't get the processed foods. that, Yeah. Because all of our stuff is processed. And what we ate was very, you know, it was very simple. We, occasionally we right. have the big Mexican meal, but for the most part, it was like you said, chicken or some pork chops and some green beans. And, you know, here's a salad and you have to fight through the salad because you're a kid. You're like, oh, let me just drown it in Thousand Island. You know, that was what you did. <laughs> but you, but then you went out and you rode your bike. Yeah. And... You went out and hung out with your friends. You didn't sit in front of the so, TV. So here's the thing. Now, instead of doing that, we get in our car and we drive to the gym where we pay a hundred dollars a month or whatever to mm-hmm. go get on equipment to move. Yeah, to and lift the- weights instead of just like doing stuff around the house, mowing our own lawn, which I'm guilty of that. Yeah, I'm guilty but, of that too. But the measure that- of success now is I want to do the least amount for the most money. That's really the measure of success. Like this, you know, CFO, CEO, those guys sit in an office all day and don't do dick, and they get a shit ton of money. Nine times out of ten, they're overweight, you know, because they're these guys that are they're fat cats. I mean, that's where that term came from. Right. So it's just that you know we're going the opposite direction that we should be going I, as a society. I would agree. I'm, and, well, I mean, look at look at the look at the way people view manual labor at this point. Yeah. You know, that's a me. You know, they call it menial jobs. It's like okay, I get sweeping, isn't a a skill set necessarily right but if you're talking about somebody who's a plumber an electrician uh a carpenter you go do it right you know you can have a phd and be like i can't fix my own like you know my own air conditioner i'm gonna pay somebody and when you know the time i spent working at the college we would have students come in and i remember one kid said i feel bad that i don't want to go to college Mm -hmm. i'm like well why and he said I just, he goes, I want to build things. Yeah, and there's nothing and, wrong and, with that. And I'm like, you, you have nothing to feel bad about. And the, the thing was, his interest was in working with his hands. And if you took that kid and put him in a history class, maybe mm. he wouldn't do so well. Right. But you could take that same kid who does great in a history class, be like, here's some wood and some saws and build us something. Be like, I, I don't know what to do. Meanwhile, the other kids just made you an entertainment center mm. because that's a skill set and a craft that not everybody has. But now we look and it's like, oh, you did that with your hands? Right. Yeah. And it's like, what? Just because you get to sit and dress nice and use your mind, there's nothing wrong with using your hands. And we don't, and we don't have that in our schools anymore either. No. There's no, none of those programs are there. When I was in Arizona, I, I caught a piece of a morning show about this guy that's like, he's been building furniture for 30, 40 years. You know, he's passing it on to his kids. He actually sponsors at one of the schools a class, and it's an elective class, where he teaches people woodworking and stuff, and because the, the school wouldn't pay for it, like we don't have that program. Like, well, I'll pay for it. Just give me the time. If this many people sign up, let me do it. So right. it's having to outsource that to keep people in that that set of work, rather than have you know in- immigrants come in that don't necessarily know how to do it right and kind sure. of whatever they you know Jerry it, it's, or whatever. It's the idea of having a, a true apprentice, exactly. Yeah, where somebody can learn it from the ground up because people don't want to do that anymore. They no. they're not even given the opportunity to try and do it at schools anymore, which is crazy. To, well, and and that goes to hey, we're going to figure out what your interest level is, what you want to take, mm-hmm. and then we're going to give you towards that. But understand, it's going to be white collar, right? Because right, right. you know we're in the suburbs, and you know we we can't have anybody going out and. God you know, forbid someone stuff. make a clock that looks like a bomb, and then that all goes away, too. I mean, just, you know, yeah, it's just a mess. See, if they would have had a proper class, this never would have happened. Right, right. So I, it's true. We, we look at success, meaning I don't have to do anything. Mm. And so then you become sedentary, and then you become fat, then your health's bad. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing, too, that, that they've talked about is a lot of people who are poor 
have worse diets because the food's cheaper. Yep. And I know they say it doesn't cost a lot to eat healthy. I don't know. Vegetables, going to the store, fruits, they're not cheap. No, they're not. And it's like, man, if I can buy a kid a, a box of mac and cheese, it's a lot cheaper. Yep. But, you know, again, you're not, you're not getting the health benefits. But I think a lot of that would be countered if you told your kid, get off your ass, go outside and run. And if we as adults did the same thing, not even run, just go for a walk. Take the dog around the block. I've started doing uh, walks around my block with my kid, mm-hmm. taking a cigar with me. Right. And it's like, you know what? I didn't mind it. The kid and I get to talk, laugh. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying a cigar. Yep. And it's just leisurely. I'm not walking because I, it's like, I've got to hit this goal. I've got to hit this. It's like, you know what? I'm just walking because I'm here. Yep. We're just moving. Yeah. And it's enjoyable at the end of it. It's like, yeah, you know, you're a little sore. Your feet might hurt a little bit. But at the end of the day, you move the machine. Exactly. You know, it's like a car that sits in the in the in the garage all the time, and you never take it out. And then you take it out. And it's like, why why isn't it running well? Mm-hmm. You got to keep everything moving. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and things like Amazon and Amazon now don't help because now you don't even have to go out to grocery right. shop. You can have those sent to your house. And I mean, it's just it's getting it's getting crazy where you don't that, even have to leave your house. We could, that could be that could be another another podcast. But yeah, I mean, uh, technology does aid agoraphobia. Mm-hmm. And I've joked that I'm an aspiring agoraphobic. All I need is to win the lottery, and I never have to leave my house again. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, and I think part of that is just because of the people you have to deal with. But clearly, the more you're up moving around, the better off you are. And then you wouldn't have to do all of these things. We wouldn't have to go on these oh shit diets where it's like, wow, how did I get this big? Now I'm going to go do this, and I got to do that, and sign up, and buy these sweatpants, and all of this, mm-hmm. and spend this money, and and then... What happens is we lose five pounds the first week, and the next week we lose a pound. We're like, ah, screw it. Right, and give up. Yeah. 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 Because yes. we want instant results. Yeah. It's like, look, you didn't get fat overnight. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah. It is. All right, so what, what about incentives for uh, – like, 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 well, going back to what Steve said with the sluts thing. Yeah. So how about this? If you uh, have your wife help you out with the diet, right. and say for every five pounds you lose, you get a little uh, little, little favor. Play? Little play? Little bedroom, something? Little, little bedroom something? favor? Yeah. Well, and you know, that's got to incentivize her too, because then it's like, <laughs> well, now he's actually not bad to look at. But I mean, that goes both ways. Yeah. Then she's like, no, here, eat this ice cream. I don't want to do another blowjob. <laughs> you know, <laughs> please just eat. I'm just, oh, why is this full ice cream? I'm tired. <laughs> well, but, but no, that can be an incentive. And, and when you think about it, obviously it affects attraction, but it also affects stamina. Libido, supposedly. Yeah. It does. And yeah. so if you were to, you know, lose weight, that that can increase sex drive. So, you know, maybe for couples out there mm-hmm. to say, hey, you know what? You lose five pounds, I buy a sexy piece of lingerie or, yep. you know, we'll do that thing where I'm suspended from the ceiling. I don't right. know. We get the sex swing or, yeah. 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 Something like that. Because let's be honest. Salads you will can, be tossed. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot weigh a lot and use a sex swing. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, you're going to no. drill into the beams anyway, yeah, hopefully. Th- there's bound to be some sort of weight limit on that. Yeah, there so, is. Yeah. So, and, and so you, that would be a good incentive. Sex <laughs> incentivizes. And again, it, it, it can increase the attraction. Yeah. Sluts. Sluts. <laughs> There we go. What would we do without our executive producer? <laughs> oh, no, not talk about sluts. Probably as much. Probably not. It's so, okay, so how is your lifestyle change going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, 15 pounds down. Nice. And um, it's just eating. And really, at this point, it's just eating right. I'm just eating the foods that I should be eating. Right. Uh, putting good food into my body and not garbage. Um, even when we went to the Chinese buffet, I stayed away from the, uh, the stuff I shouldn't eat. It was mostly you know vegetables and meats, and I didn't have any rice or any noodles or anything I, I like that. I eat absolute crap. Yeah. But, you so, know. It, I mean, that's really what it is. It was my first meal of the day. So. But at, at some, I'm basically trying to get enough of a – I'm trying to get about 20, 25 down to where I can really start incorporating the cardio. Sure. Because right now, if I went and walked, and my knees hurt. I'm like, okay, I still right. got too much weight on me. That's my body telling me, yeah, you probably shouldn't do this yet. So, you know, Swimming. once I get – Yeah, once I get about 25 pounds down, I'll be able to walk more and get on the treadmill and – take the dogs for a walk and stuff like that and that type of thing. Do you have a treadmill? Uh, No. No. But they have them at all the hotels I go to, so there's no excuse. I mean, really, I should be able to get up in the morning. Get you a treadmill and watch a movie at the house. Right, right. I always think they should have the treadmills that work that work the TV. So you have to do the treadmill for thirty minutes, and you get thirty minutes. Like some Rube Goldberg device. Yeah, like it's like I've got to move yeah. the elliptical. Exactly. And, you got to you got to be constantly moving for the TV to be on. Oh, if we stop, up oh, TV turns off. Sorry. You know, that'd be great. For God kids. damn it, Dad! I did. <laughs> I was trying to play Halo here. Whoa. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
<laughs> that would, you just that have actually, a dog on it constantly. The dog's like, <laughs> can I get the fuck off this treadmill yet? <laughs> We're going to just put a bone right in front of it. <laughs> You're getting fat, Skippy. Um, that's actually not a half bad idea. All right. I can never do the ellipticals. I don't With have the, the arms and the things. And the and feet the, going. At yeah. the, it's too much coordination. It's like it is, I, yeah. Yeah, I prefer just the treadmill. Exactly. Or an exercise bike. Yeah, that's that's. I better. really prefer to live in a place where I could go out and walk every day, but that's Texas. You can't do that. So we've got about three good months. Yeah, I I prefer walking when it's colder. Really? Yeah, I yeah. I, I like that better. I'd rather bundle up than go out and be like, oh my god, it's just I hate sweating, muggy. Yeah, I hate sweating. So yeah, yeah, I see. That's why you should walk when it's cold. Mm, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to being thin again so I don't sweat as much through my suits. We, and right now I'm a fat guy in a suit, which I hate. You know, you got to go to the big and tall. And I've I got the big part, but I don't have the tall part. So it's like, oh, great. Here's my 44 inch waist and my size 30 length. I'm like, oh, I will tell you like this. It is, Oompa Oompa. it is nice, to, it is nice to, to be able to just buy stuff and, and off the rack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always have, but now it's not the, hey, you got to pay three extra dollars for that third X. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so I, I, and, and I do. I feel better. Yeah, I never felt that more than going to that going to the DR and needing to oh, get yeah. shirts, oh. and they were completely the wrong size. They're probably more really what they're supposed to be. That the American two X is like a I don't 4X. know. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. You know, I don't know. I ran into the I ran into the same thing in London, buying a shirt, and it's like, oh look, it's an XL, and I wasn't. You know, I was I was down quite a bit at the time wearing regular XLs, and I was like, eh, this isn't an XL, I'm more like a large. But right. they get you with the athletic fit. Right. Because if it's an XL athletic fit, that's more like a large. Right. So right. if you get like a double XL athletic fit, because then it gives you the shoulders but narrow at the waist. Mm-hmm. I used to know these things when I was thinner. Yeah. Yeah. I was a perfect 42 long, 34-34 in nice. a suit. Haven't seen a three in my waist in some time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me neither, man. That'd be me nice. Me neither. I yeah. can't believe, yeah, you ever look at pictures and you're like, that was me? Holy shit. Yeah, I look at pictures when I got married and I'm like, that's not even the same guy. I like, remember I seeing a picture you, exchanged you, you me I remember somebody seeing else. A picture, one of your wedding pictures. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, look at there. Full head of hair, thin, you know. Yeah. Just it crazy. happens to all Just of us. It's crazy. I blame kids. I blame it's, kids. It's aging. It's aging and kids. Mostly kids. Yeah. <laughs> that's another thing we should drive in a drink. <laughs> the, you know, love, love to hate getting old. Right, yeah. That we'll should be something else we, yeah. we talk about. But yeah, so the diet thing, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think it's a monumental waste of time. Um, I think there's a lot more that you can do to make yourself healthy. And, and it really is a, it's a lifestyle change. I think if you stay away from – and people know. I mean, you kind of know you shouldn't be eating McDonald's every day or Wendy's every day or whatever. I mean, it's kind of out there right there in, in plain sight. You know, it, it, just because it's easy and cheap doesn't mean you should eat it. Um, but again, it goes, you know, you look at the guys that are healthy that do work out all the time, that have those jobs where they're working constantly. Those guys can eat whatever the hell they want because their body has such a high metabolism that it doesn't matter. They process it like that. And it I knew a guy who was, he, he did marathons. I was like, why the hell would you do this? Mm-hmm. And he's like, because I can eat what I want. And he had the giant, like, family sized bag of Skittles. Oh, my God. The huge family wing. He goes, you know what? He goes, I'll eat all that today. And he goes, and I can. And he goes, because tomorrow I'm going to go run 15 miles. That's crazy. And I'm like, you know what? I don't like Skittles that much. Yeah. You know, not enough to run 15 miles. I did enjoy running when I could. When my knees could handle it, I loved it. Mm-hmm. And there's one of our callers now. Mm-hmm. Hello, you're on the air. Are you <laughs> overweight? Would you like to um, buy a new credit card system? Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. I, actually, you know, if we, we got somebody like that, I'd be like, all right, so quit eating. But the only thing I could probably do 15 miles on right now would be a bike. Maybe. But um, even then, the chafing would probably kill. Yeah, that I might be able to pull that off. That's why you got to get that dorky short so you don't you avoid the uh, chafing. Yeah, I, I never want to dress. I, I, if I ever did bicycling, I would never wear those dorky clothes. I don't. Think. You got to wear like regular shorts over them. Yeah, nobody wants to see a fat guy in spandex. That's yeah. just wrong. And that stupid hat, whatever the point of that's supposed to be. I look. I'm old enough. I don't believe in bicycle helmets. It's like just get out there on your banana seat mm-hmm. and ride, and then use the back brake so you can skid and make a little tire mark. Cool. Cool. Yeah, kids don't get that anymore. Yep. I was a kid. I used to ride, I had a Peugeot, which was Whoa. an expensive Italian 18, you know, speed bike. And I used to ride from New Braunfels to San Marcos and go swimming and stuff and then ride back to New Braunfels. That's a decent ride. All the time. Every weekend we'd do that. We'd get out, like it was usually on a, you know, Saturday, we were in San Marcos all day, swimming and hanging out. And... Did you go to Ocarina Springs? Oh, yeah. All Did you time. see the swimming, uh, the of swimming course pig? I saw the swimming pig. You know, I don't that, think that's there anymore, is it? I don't know. That was I went there, and that was where I met the the girl who I who who I developed my first big crush on. 
Well, we went to San Marcos for the girls because that was a college there. So there was yeah, an, yeah, an inordinate amount of her hot name chicks. was Lisa. Yeah, yeah. It and was... I was like high school, pretending to be in college. Oh yeah, I'm in college. <laughs> what class is you taking? P P E. See, I can do that now. It's be like, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm in college. You're like, what do you teach? Like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. And you know what? I always get English professor. <laughs> there you go. You like, look like an English professor. Yeah. yeah. You should see me with the corduroy jacket. I believe it. Yeah. I believe so it. I you get the patches. I do. You do? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> all I need to pull out the pie and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all you got to do. <laughs> Maybe a little one of those little uh, fedoras. Yeah. You need to come hatch. to my office so we can talk about your essay. Mm. What? Your Mexican boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Mm-hmm. Somehow, I you just... walked right into that one. You walked right into that. Well, you know what can I say? So, what? What's your? I mean, do you even do any New Year's resolutions at all? Is that something you even no, talk about to yourself? I, and promise yourself. You know, no. And I've always been criticized for that because yeah. it's just like, yeah, you know, you need to have a goal. And I, I will say this: um, being as I'm going to have so many changes going. Well, you know what? We've never talked about it on the on. We've always alluded, and alert viewers, mm-hmm. or alert listeners probably picked up on it, especially if you're one who, who's actually a friend of mine, but I'm getting divorced this year. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously I've got planning to do, mm-hmm. but there are things that I've said, yes, I want to do that in the year going ahead, and I've never really done that. I've always kind of been that type B guy who's like, hey, let's see what happens. Right. Um, but as far as doing the resolutions... No, and I think part of it is because I've seen so many people who just beat themselves up like, oh, my God, I, I got to get to the gym today. I got to get to the gym. It's like you're running a fever. No, I've got – it's like <laughs> you don't have right. to do anything. Yeah. You know, you should want to do this and get something out of it. So I've kind of always fallen. You know, you need to post your goals on the wall that you're going to do 10 push-ups when you get up in the morning. Okay, and if I don't, right, then right. what? It's like there's no – you know, where's the consequence? Now, if the consequence is now I feel like shit, right? Then, then that's it. And I think a lot of times the only thing that really affects change in us is things get so bad I have to do something different. Yeah. Just and I'm that type of guy. Just telling myself, hey, you need to do this. You need to do this. It doesn't work until it's just like, wow, I don't like this anymore. And the only thing I can do is change it. And that was kind of where I got with the weight. Now, granted. Again, getting my health stuff strained out, my, my blood iron. I dropped a lot of weight right away. Mm-hmm. But then it was, okay, I'm, I'm changing the diet. I'm going to start just moderately exercising. And pretty soon when you see results, it's like, I actually feel better. I would rather do this than sit and feel crappy. Yeah, yeah. So I don't – I'm not big on setting up lists and saying, hey, this marks a new time and – I want to accomplish this in these years. I don't know. Maybe I've just always been that guy who I've never thought that much ahead, especially like in a job interview. Where do you see yourself in five years? Like, Pfft. yeah, I don't know. You yeah. got any, where do you see me? Right. I, I've never had goals. And I don't know if it's brought about by age or, or by the fact that uh, uh, I'm kind of being forced into it. Right. right. Um, but for the first time, I actually have things where it's like, you know what? I would like this. I would like to do this. I like the idea of consequences if you don't do it. So maybe we should start up a service where if you sign up with us at the beginning of the year, we have your resolutions, and we, we have some way to monitor it. Like, oh, you're going to do this many steps in a day, and we're going to see what you do. And if you don't, guess what? You're going to have a flat tire when you go out to your car. <laughs> you're going to have a shitty day. We're going to make sure you have a shitty day. And if you don't do it for so many days in a row, eh, someone's going to randomly walk up and break your finger. You know, something like that. See, there well, you go. Yeah, you know, he's not doing well, it. Well, if you think about it, and, and uh, I, ta- I was talking to uh, one of the counselors at the school about this, and she we got into um, crime and punishment, basically, uh-huh. saying that y- y- the studies show that consequence is not a deterrent to crime. I'm like, really? Because my whole life, consequence has been my whole deterrent to anything. Right. You know, it's, it's, that's why I don't do stuff, because I don't want the consequence. Would I like to go and bust out this guy's window for being an ass? Yeah, but, you know, then I get sued. We get in a fight. It's like, it's not worth it. It's always the consequence. And when you think of a little kid, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Hey, knock it off, or you're grounded, you're getting spanked, something like that. It's the consequence that makes them say, "Mm, I don't want that. Yeah, true. So it's got to be that, but, but some people are just happy living. It doesn't bother them enough. Right. I think. Yeah, I think if if the weight, if like, you know, 24-hour fitness said, okay, it's 25 bucks a month as long as you come this many times and we see progress. If you don't come for two months, well, now it's 50 bucks a month. Now it's $100 a month. Now it's 250 a month. What if you did, 
hey, it's a hundred bucks a month, but we knock off five bucks for every pound you lose, right, or something like that. Yeah, go the opposite direction. Yeah, just a way to incentivize them. But it's like, hey, but if it goes up, right, and then, then we take gotta... that money that you that you are paying less or whatever, and it goes into a kitty, and you know, we'll... yeah, at the end of the year you get it back or something for some new clothes or something. I don't know, you know, something like that. That's actually, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Is say all the money you save, we're going to put aside so you can buy new clothes. There you go. Or uh, workout equipment. Whatever your favorite piece is, we'll give it to you at a discount. You can have it at home. No, because then they won't come back. Something Probably clothes. Clothes is better. Yeah, but I, something to incentivize. Mm-hmm. Or, or, like you said, a deterrent. Yeah. So, Well, like they're doing that with insurance now. With the, Oh, you don't get in a wreck and you get a, you know. I got one of those things stuck in my car right now. Yeah. You know, rate. where it's like, yeah, we'll drop you down if, you know, it shows that you're a safe driver. Yeah. Which I am because living where we do, mm-hmm. if you're going 41 to 40. You're going to get nailed. Yeah. yeah. Big so time. it's just, but, you know, when I was younger, it didn't matter. Like, eh, I got a speeding ticket. I don't care. Now I'm like, holy crap. Right. I just don't want the hassle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that makes sense. That makes sense. But I think part of that, again, comes with age and saying, you know what? It's just not worth it. Yeah. Whereas when you're younger, that's not such a big deal. Yeah. So we, so we, I think we've determined is, A, get out and move around. Yes, definitely do that. And... Hey, Brandon and I to uh, to beat you up. There you go. That's what we need yeah. to do. I like we'll, it. Lose weight or, or we'll, we'll come by <laughs> and beat come you up or something. break your fingers. <laughs> to be fair, you're going to probably need to get in a little better shape first before we can yeah. go. <laughs> right. Be, me, me too. I mean, Especially I got they try and run away from me. I'll be like, yeah, ah, I got to get the car. I'll, like, yeah. I'll just be just slashing a lot of tires. <laughs> just a lot of tires. Oh, you are Mexican. Yeah, exactly. I, owe, I, I, always owe, I owed you that one. You did. I did. You did. Hey, so, uh, well, you guys have killed another 30 minutes with Yay. us. So uh, if they want to listen to uh, other episodes, say this is their first time, mm-hmm. and they're like, God, what the hell else have they talked about? Where would they go and uh, listen to that? Well, you can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and YouTube. YouTube. We yep. still got to get a picture up there or something. Yeah, we need to get something up there, yeah. We'll figure it out. Get our executive producer, Steve, on that. <laughs> yeah. He now feels he our phone calls. He does. Yep. <laughs> so far, people have tried to change our credit card service three times. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, kids. That's it for us now. We'll talk to you next week. Take care.